hello guys and welcome to another tutorial from Zeno Trust. so in this tutorial we're going to look at the flexible box layout module okay that sounds like a very fancy thing okay we're going to look at the flex box okay um, essentially flex box is a one-dimensional layout uh, method okay for laying out items on a web page in rows or columns okay um, unlike the grid system that enables us to lay out items in both rows and columns okay um, so essentially flexbox makes it easier for us to design flexible responsive layout structures without the need to use floats and all of that stuff okay um, as a web developer if you have the knowledge of flexbox then designing in css is going to be a lot easier for you okay uh, because flexbox actually make things a lot easier so what do we have on the page we have um, essentially this HTML template, okay, and basically we have a div with a class of container, and within that div we have five divs, okay, with a class of item, and they all have modifier classes, so each of them have item one to five, okay. All right, so um, I'm going to say from the beginning that this first div, okay, this parent div containing the five div is known as the flex container okay so this is um the flex container where we're going to you know add our initial flex styles okay and then all of these divs within this main div here is known as the flex items okay so um with that in mind let's go ahead and write um, some basic styles so we can begin Okay, um, so let's just do first and foremost, let's do padding and set it to zero and let's do margin and also set it to zero and I'm going to do box sizing and set it to border box and then I'm going to target the container and I'm going to set the background color to a gray color a light gray color so hash e e e and i'm going to set some padding of 10 pixels okay let me save and see okay so we have this star here next i'm going to target the item so i'll say dot item and i'm going to give it a background color of let me say orange And I'm going to give it some padding of 20 pixels. Let me save that and see what we have. Okay, so this is what we have here on the right. So I have live reload um, active. Uh, let's separate it by giving it a margin of say 10 pixels. Okay, so the boxes are separated. And let's um, give it a color. So let's change the color of the text to white. And let's say increase the font size. So font size to let's just say 20 pixels. And let's save. Okay. So essentially we are good to go here. So this is just a simple um styling we added to our HTML. Alright, now let's see how the power of Flexbox can um alter the layout of this page. So the first thing we're going to do, like I said, is we're going to add um styles that would affect this flex container okay which is like this guy outside here all right so i'll come here and this is it dot container so what i'll do is i'll say display and i'll set it to flex and then i'll save notice what happened so initially they were um arranged one on top of the other okay but when i set display to flex you see that they are now aligned all right so um that's the first thing about the power of flex okay um now let's see another property one property we can look at is flex direction okay now if i say row okay which is what we have here and save nothing happens that is because flex direction with a um, property of row is with a value of row is the default um default um value for the flex direction property 
So, but if I highlight this and change it to column and save, you see that it goes back to how it was before. So, um, these two values we've looked at already um, can be used to, you know, ar ar arrange our content in different screen widths. For example, if on a desktop we have like a number of cards, like maybe three cards aligned out in a row, when we come to a mobile device, we may want to set the flex direction to column. Okay? All right. So um, let me just go back to row and show you one other property. So I'll say row and I'll say reverse. And then I'll save. Now watch what happens. You know, initially it was box 1 to 5 starting from here. But now it's box 1 to 5 starting from the opposite side. Okay? Let's do column and reverse. And as you can see, we have box 5, okay? And like that, downwards, okay? So um, I'll just set it back to row so we can see other properties. So I'll say row. And I'll save, okay? So we have this very nice looking um, row here. The next property we're going to look at is the justify content. So I'll say justify and content, okay? And now what does this justify content do? What it does is that it aligns the content on the horizontal axis okay the horizontal axis is from left to right yeah so it arranges the content on the horizontal axis so if i say something like center here and i save you see that the um, content is aligned you know to the center okay so maybe what i'll do next here is i'm just going to remove the fifth box so i'll just comment it out and save so we have four boxes so we can see the spacing around it okay all right so we have justify content center so this is more like the um, same thing we experience when we work with a microsoft word document we can justify our content we can justify it to the left to the right and you know spread it across so basically justify content aligns your content on the horizontal axis which is from left to right so that's what we just saw here now there are other values we can have for the justify content so what i'm going to do is i'll say flex start and i'll save and as you can see it brings us back to how it was before so what that means is that the flex start value for our justify content property is the default okay now let's see something else so i'll say flex end and i'll save and as you can see it takes it to the end okay now there are some more interesting property let's try this one so space between so my my code editor is giving me options okay but let's just see space between first and save and essentially what this does is that it creates equal amount of space between the content okay now let's do space around and then let's save and as you can see, equal amount of space around the document, um, the boxes. Okay. Um, okay. There's one more. So there's space evenly. And uh, let's save. And you see, the space is evenly distributed between um, the items, the box items. Okay. All right. So that's that's it for uh, justify content um uh property so we're going to look at the next one and the next one is the align items and to look at this align item and to understand it properly what i'm going to do is i'm going to um give my container a height okay so currently it doesn't have a height so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to come here and say i want it to be h e i I want it to have a height of let's just say 50% of the viewport height so that's 50 VH and let's save okay so what we have here is that we have the um, boxes stretching you know the whole um, height of the container so what that simply means is that I'm going to give my box a height of let's just say 30 pixels and I'll save Okay, so I got to make it more. So maybe 60 pixels. Okay, and I'll save. All right. So um, let's come back to our container class and let's do our align items. So I'll say align items. 
and the first thing I would the first value I would enter here is center and I'll save and as you can see we have the boxes in the center of the container all right so the properties we are adding here are actually affecting how the um, boxes is laid out within the container so there are other properties we can have for the align items okay so <clears throat> i'm going to say um, flex start so flex start and i'll save and as you can see it it brings them upwards so let's do flex end and as you can see it takes them here to the bottom and let's do stretch of course um the stretch is not working because we had set the height um property of the box to 60 pixels okay so if i comment out the height of the box items themselves and save you will see that it will stretch the whole um height of the content okay so that's one property um another property of the um container we can you know add so i'm going to uncomment this out and save it and i'm probably just going to do this as center and save okay now let's look at some other properties we can have on the container so this time i'm going to look at the flex wrap property so i'm just going to add flex wrap okay uh, well maybe before i add that i'm just going to show you a demonstration so what i'll do is i'll come to my index.html and i'll comment out the fifth box okay so we have the fifth box or maybe i'm gonna add a sixth and maybe a seventh eight nine ten so i'm gonna do ten boxes okay so i'll come here and say box six and box seven eight nine and 10 okay of course it simply means i have to change some of these items here too but i doubt i would need all of them but let me just quickly do that so six seven and then i'll save all right so um let me just expand my browser so basically we have 10 boxes now what happens when i try to reduce the width of my browser so i'm just going to reduce the width of my browser okay so initially the text starts to adjust within the items okay and if i keep reducing the width of my browser you see that you know i'm losing some of my content and i would have to come here and scroll to see them so it essentially it has distorted my content yeah that's where the flex wrap comes in okay so essentially if i come to my styles here within the container and i then say flex wrap and there are actually two classes um the default is no wrap so if i save nothing changes but then if i then say wrap and save Okay, maybe what I'll do first is I would remove the height for this guy here. So I would comment this out and save. All right. So you see that when I added flex wrap, it moved my content to the next line. Okay. Um, I probably should do my justify content to flex start. So flex and start and save. Okay. So let me just take this out. So we have 10 boxes here. Now when I reduce the browser, you see that it start moving the boxes to the next line, yeah? Okay. So essentially that's what the flex wrap property does, okay? Now, um instead of adding um flex direction and flex wrap, okay? Remember here we have flex direction here and then we have flex wrap. So there is a shorthand, um, there is a shorthand we can use to add both of these properties, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to comment this out first, and I'm also going to comment the flex wrap property, okay? And then I would come here and I would add the shorthand property. And the name of the shorthand property is flex flow. 
so this is it right here so flex flow now the flex flow property takes two values the first is the flex direction and the second is the flex wrap so essentially i'm just going to look at this flex direction and it's row we are working with row and the flex wrap we set it to wrap and then i'll save and you see that nothing has changed here okay so essentially we still have um a web page laid out as though we had flex direction and flex wrap set differently so that's the flex flow property okay but what i will do is basically i'm going to comment out the flex flow and i would uncomment this flex wrap and flex direction all right okay so now the last property i am going to talk about in the flex container is the align content property and to properly explain the aligned content property, I'm going to restore the height of the container. So I would uncomment this out and I would probably just make the height 100% of the viewport height and I'll save. And as you can see, we have um, some changes on the page, but let's not um, be bothered too much about the changes. Just focus on the aligned content property. So essentially when we use the flex wrap property, we then can use the align content property to control the layout of the wrapped content. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say align and I'll say content and it can take a number of um, values. So the first is I'll say flex start and I'll save and let's see what happens. So it takes the items within the container to the top of the page. What happens if we change it to flex end? I'm sure you already know so it takes it to the bottom of the page okay and we can go ahead and do space around space between stretch and other you know uh, properties so let's just see space between and save okay let's do space around and save okay so ideally the space around seems like the default property okay so if I comment out the aligned content property, you see that it still stays the same way. So the space around property is the default property for the um, aligned content property. So uh, basically, those are very important um, properties we can use to control our flex box. Um, next, we're going to look at properties we can, you know, apply on the flex items themselves. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to maybe reduce this to just 5. If I need the 10, I would bring them back. So I'm going to comment out 6 to 10 and I'll save. So we just have um, 5 boxes, okay? I'll come here and let me just see. Maybe I would also change the viewport height. I'll just comment this out and save. So we just have it displayed here like this, okay? Okay, I think there is something I should have said about the align items property, okay? So essentially here we said align items and um, we looked at center, flex start, flex, flex end. There's something we did not look at and that is baseline. Okay, so I'm going to save that. And it doesn't look like any change occurred here, okay? But what I'm going to do to show you that there is actually a change here is I'm going to come to... Uh, my index.html and I would add a style to let's say item 3 okay so I'll just grab this item 3 class and I'll come here and so I'll say dot item 3 and the style basically I'll just change the height so I'll just maybe copy this and I'll make the height 120 pixels and I'll save now you see that we have this box 3 having twice um, the height as other boxes but the text is aligned at this point here with all the other boxes now let's go ahead and change this align items back to something like center and save okay now you see that when we change it to center it centered all of the boxes but the text within the boxes, in other words, the content within the boxes, um, they are not aligned, okay? So basically, that's what that baseline does. So let me just do baseline one more time.
and as you can see we have our text aligned like this okay okay so now let's continue and see um, classes we can add to the flex items themselves and to do that basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to first off I'll remove this uh, property and I'm going to duplicate this so I'll say control C and okay and then I'll change this to one two Okay, so basically what we just did is we um, targeted the modifier classes for our flex items, okay? So item 1 to 5. Alright, now let's look at the styles we can apply to the flex items, okay? So what I'm going to do first is, for example, the item 1, I'm going to give it a height of, I'll say, 120px. And I'll save okay so item 1 has more height than the other boxes now let's look at the first property I want us to talk about align self property so if I come here and I say align self okay and I this is item 2 right so this is item 2 and I say I want it to be flex end and save you notice that so it aligns the item 2 to the bottom of the container okay so that's the align self property basically we can use this property to to align the flex item with however we want okay so um, of course we can do something like center and i'll save and you see it's aligned to the center okay so the next property we're going to look at is the order property Essentially, the order property specifies the order of the flex item, and the default is zero. Okay. Okay. So basically, we have. Um, I'm just going to get rid of the align self property, and I'll save. So basically, we have box one through five. Yeah. Now, if I want this box five to be displayed first, all I need to do is come to box five and set the order to. So remember, I said this. The default is zero, right? So if I set it to zero, it doesn't change anything. Okay, so if I set it to minus one, for example, box five becomes the first. So setting a higher number simply means that it will be displayed last. Okay, so if I say something like order and I say minus one and I save, automatically box five becomes the first to be displayed. Okay, what if I want box one to be displayed last? Basically, I just need to come to item 1 and I say something like order and I set it to 1, for example, and I save and box 1 is displayed last, okay? Alright, so let me just get rid of that and save. So we have box 5 here. So that's the order property, yeah? So now the next thing I'll talk about is the flex grow property. Essentially, the flex grow property specifies how much a flex item will grow relative to the um, rest of the flex items on that container so what i'm going to do is i'm going to look at box four okay so box four is currently the last box we have or maybe i should just work with box one i'll come to box one and i'll say flex grow and i'll basically just set it to one so but the default is zero so if i save nothing happens but what happens when i set it to one and save is that the box one takes up all the available space it can okay so if i begin to shrink this page now you see that the box one takes up all the available space it can okay so that's basically the flex grow property okay um if i want all of the boxes to take the same space i just need to set flex grow on all of them and set it to one okay and they will take up the same width okay all right, so let's look at the flex shrink property. Essentially, the flex shrink property specify how much a flex item will shrink in relation to the rest of the flex items, okay? So what I'm going to do is, um, first off, I'm going to remove the flex wrap property. So I'll come to this flex wrap property here and I will just say no wrap and I'll save, okay? Um, and then I'll come to my item one 
Um, before then, I'll give the items a width of, I'll just say 100 pixels. And then I'll save. And then I'll come to my item one and I would say, first off, I'm just going to comment out this guy here. So flex grow property. I'll then say flex shrink. Okay, so basically flex, flex shrink property specifies how much a flex item will shrink relative to the rest of the flex items in that container. Okay, and the default is one. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to zero. Okay, basically what I'm telling this um, item one is that I don't want it to shrink as much as the others okay and then i'll save and let's just begin to reduce the width of the browser so i'll reduce the width of my browser and basically i don't know if you notice but these other items are smaller than this one okay that's because i set the flex i reduce the flex shrink of this one so it's not shrinking as much as the other items okay so basically that's the flex shrink property and the more I reduce the browser, the more prominent it becomes. All right, so one of the last properties we are going to look at is the flex basis property. And essentially, the flex basis property is, enables us to set the initial length of, you know, um, a flex item. So if I take this flex box 4, for example, or let's just do box 5. So if I go to box 5 and I set the flex basis, to let's say um, 200 pixels for example so 200 px so the initial width that is and i save you see that it's you know the width of this box 5 has changed compared to the others okay um, so basically that's the flex basis property however there is a shorthand to um, set the flex grow flex shrink and flex basis property and basically all you just need to do is to say flex okay so for example if I maybe I should get this style so I'm going to cut this out Control X and I'll put it here okay so if I wanted to set flex grow flex shrink and flex basis on an item there is no need to write all of them individually okay so I'll comment all of them out basically what I need to do is just say flex okay and i can then set my values for both the grow shrink and basis so for the grow for example i'll say zero and for the shrink i would say maybe zero two and for the flex basis i can then say 200 px and then i'll save okay so all of those properties here is what is reflected in the box one item here okay so as you can see yeah so basically um we've you know looked at most of the properties that you know the flexbox um, system actually contains all right so i'm going to leave a link in the description where i create a um header section of a website with a responsive mobile menu and in that um, video i use flexbox okay i use flexbox to create the header and to style the menu section okay so i want to encourage you to go and look at that video and see how we can apply flexbox to our designs if you're not subscribed to my channel make sure to hit the subscribe button all right so thank you so much for watching this lecture now you've learned the concept of flexbox the next thing you need to learn is the grid system okay if you understand flexbox and the grid system then there's literally no style or no layout you will not be able to easily you know design yourself by writing css thank you so much for watching this lecture i'm most likely going to leave a link in the description for the grid um crash course okay so um, check out the links in the description and see you in another tutorial